Let me tell you this, the guy in high school that did all of that shit in high school and that was a cool guy in high school is not the cool guy when you get older. You know who's a cool guy when they get older? When they handle their business, when they have discipline, when they take care of themselves, when they go out there and do well financially. You know why? Because they surround themselves with the right people. They take the risk, which guess what? Is pain in of itself. What's up guys, welcome to the DNG podcast, the Driven Not Given podcast. In this episode, I'm gonna talk about the two pains that we must pay in life. The first pain is the pain of discipline and the second pain is a pain of regret, okay? This is one of the things that I first heard Jim Rohn, one of my, the, the late great Jim Rohn, one of my from afar mentors, right? A mentor to millions of entrepreneurs. He says the difference is that discipline weighs ounces while regret weighs tons. So we're going to get into what some of these different things are, right? And and to start this off, there was a movie that I saw a long time ago. If I'm not mistaken, it was The Weatherman. I think it was Nicolas Cage in that movie. And Nicolas Cage in The Weatherman said, somebody in that movie said, I think somebody said to Nicolas Cage, they said the right thing to do and the hard thing to do are usually the same thing. That's such a powerful statement. So let's look. Let's look at some examples of this, right? So for example, imagine the right thing to do. We know that getting a workout, we know that exercising daily or maybe four or five times a week is a smart idea. Exercising for 20 or 30 minutes per day. Even if it's just walking around your block, go, go out in the morning, get some fresh air, and walk for 20, 30 minutes. It doesn't have to be an intense workout. It doesn't have, even have to be at the gym. Go out there and walk, get back, do you know 40 pushups, right? Do sets of 10. But the point is, go out there and do it. Here's the thing, is that really hard? No, it's not hard. Guess what? Wake up 30 minutes earlier, 40 minutes earlier and get it done. When you get home, when it's time for you to you know watch Netflix, don't watch Netflix for the first 30 minutes, the first 40 minutes. Get a little workout in, do some jumping jacks, do some burpees, do some squats. Get it in, make it a habit, right? So it's not hard to do. As a matter of fact, it's easy to do. It's actually easy to do. Here's a problem. It's easier not to do it, right? So let's look at another example, eating healthier. Take that soda away from your home. Don't even have that soda in your home. Again, remember, the, the right thing to do and the hard thing to do are usually the same thing. So having that soda in your house, get rid of that soda. Those soda and chips, get rid of them. Replace them with some fruit. Replace it with some water. That's a simple example. If you don't have it at home, for example, when I barely started dating my wife, she used to come over to my house, right? And she used to look at my fridge and said, wow, you don't have anything in your fridge. And I really didn't. I had like some almond milk and, you know, a little bit of fruit and, you know, very little stuff, but I certainly didn't have any junk food. And she says in the middle of the night, right? She says, man, I wish you had like so something to snack on some cookies. And she, she, she was in great shape. It's not like, you know, that, but from time to time, she liked to have that stuff. And I said to her, well, I don't have that because if I don't have it, I can't eat it. So I don't even think about it, but if I have it, if it's present, guess what? I'm gonna eat that stuff, it's the bottom line, right? Put that donut down is one thing that I would advise you. Instead of that donut, why don't you go ahead and replace it with maybe a rice cake or something, right? But the point that I'm getting to is that there's a lot of little examples of things that we can do that are actually easy to do, but again, they're easier not to do. So here's another question. Do you have any negative friends? Do you have any negative unmotivated loser friends. I know that I used to have a bunch of friends like that that weren't going anywhere fast. They were negative, they were not ambitious, they were just not the kind of people that I wanted to relate to. When I figured that out, you know, our parents always told us, birds of a feather flock together. You guys hear me say this often. Dime con quien te juntas y te digo quien eres. That is a quote, a Spanish quote, which basically means birds of a feather flock together, right? But the point is, who are you hanging out with? How about you limit some of the time that you spend with these people? You drastically limit some of the time that you spend with these people because guess what? You will become the average of the five people that you spend the majority of your time with. But guess what? We're talking about two pains, the pain of discipline and the pain of regret. So the pain of discipline is that discipline to not eat those chips and soda, to not eat that donut, to drink more water, to exercise a little bit. It's uncomfortable. Here's the deal. Success exists outside of the comfort zone and it's easier not to do it, but it's not that hard. So exercise, eat right, limit your associations. How about this other one? Have you ever wasted money on things that you didn't need to impress people that didn't give a shit about you? 
I know that I did. I know that a lot of people do, especially in the world of social media. Everybody wants to keep up with the Joneses. They spend money on a bunch of stuff that they don't really need to impress a bunch of people on social media that most of them they've never even met in person. But they see somebody got a new car, so these guys want to go out there and flex and get a new car. They see that these people went on you know, this expensive vacation and all of a sudden these people want to go and get on an expensive vacation. Let me tell you something, man. That fake influencer life, it's a lot of pressure on some of these people. And I see so many people going broke, trying to look rich, all to impress a bunch of people that, listen, the day that you die, these people are not going to show up to your funeral. Matter of fact, the day that you die, the majority of people, if it rains on the day of your burial, 50% of your loved ones will not show up to your burial. These are the facts. There was a study that was done. The weather will determine how 50% of your loved ones won't even show up. And here's the deal. Most people care so much about not only their loved ones' opinions, but about a bunch of people on social media that they don't give a shit about. So guess what? We have to have that discipline right now because the discipline right now is a lot easier. It's a lot less burdensome than the pain of not having these things in the future, not doing these things in the future. So let me give you some examples. So what's harder? Eating right and exercising or diabetes in the next... 10 to 20 years. What's harder? Limiting your association with a bunch of negative, unmotivated people that are not going anywhere or, you know, being 60 years old, seven years, 70 years old, time flies and then all of a sudden you've never accomplished shit. Why? Because you just kept the same association because you didn't understand that you become the average of the five people that you hang out with all the time. So you got a bunch of people that are not motivated. They're not doing anything. Maybe they're depending on the government to help them out. Hey man, government, give me some more free money. Give me some more free money. Let me give an example. Back before welfare, if you look at minorities, minorities in this country before welfare was a 23%, 23% single parent household before welfare. Nowadays, 2021, it's more like 80%, 80% because the government incentivizes these people to guess what? To not be in a two parent household. They pay a single mother more money. Here, here, here's a bunch of more free money as long as you don't have a man in the house. Guess what? Comp plan drives behavior. So that is a perfect example of people wanting just more people, you know, the wrong people, the wrong people. I used to have friends that used to say, hey, I think that the government should take care of us. Bullshit. I didn't agree with them. And then I realized, you know what? If I hang out with, I don't need to get away from these people. I need to run away from these people as soon as humanly possible. I'm now 38 years old, I'm a grown ass man. And here's one thing that I know at 38 years old. At my age, I now have lived, and I I also am a person that observes a lot. And I have lived long enough to see the drastic impact that the pain of discipline or the pain of regret has on people. I remember in high school, the studs in high school, the girls used to like them, they were popular. You know, they were always partying and drinking and that was a cool thing to do in high school. Smoking weed, that was a cool thing to do in high school and the girls liked that shit. Guess what? For those of you guys that are looking, let me tell you this. For those of you young people that are watching this, let me tell you this. The guy in high school that did all of that shit in high school and that was a cool guy in high school is not the cool guy when you get older. You know who's a cool guy when they get older? When they handle their business, when they have discipline, when they take care of themselves, when they go out there and do well financially. You know why? Because they surround themselves with the right people. They take the risk, which guess what? Is pain in and of itself. Taking risk is painful. Failing is painful. But you know what? You learn a lot more from it. And then guess what happens later? It develops discipline and it develops that success. Those are the people that are cool. Now, I remember the girls that, a matter of fact, it reminds me of a song. I forget the guy's name, but the guy basically talks about back then they used to diss me. Oh, matter of fact, it reminds me of a different song. It was uh, B.I.G., right? He says, they used to diss me. Now they write in letters because they miss me, right? Here's the thing, though. For those of you, and there's a lot of young guys watching this. I'm going to give you a golden nugget, young guys. Write this down. No bullshit. You could lose a lot of money chasing women, but you'll never lose women chasing money. So guess what? Get your disciplines, your associations, and your money right. Get your disciplines, which lead to consistency. Surround yourself with the right people. Make a decision to pay the price of discipline instead of the price of regret. So the next one that we're getting into is this. Here's a question. What is easier? Not wasting money on stupid things that don't serve you on liabilities, on expensive clothes, expensive watches, 
on taking unnecessary trips that maybe you don't need. And don't get me wrong, I'm not against trips. Go ahead, take your trips, take your vacations. You only live once, go see the beautiful places in the world. But I see a lot of people do that mainly to put stuff on the gram for a picture that people are gonna see for one or two days and then it's gone. Then guess what, they gotta do it over and over again. That's one example, right? Not everybody's driven by social media, right? But a lot of people are driven by impressing family members, by trying to keep up with the Joneses, right? So what's harder? To stop wasting money and instead start investing money in assets. Start investing money in, in things like that. Because guess what? If you're not investing your money wisely, stop wasting it, start investing it. So what's harder? Wasting the money and then in the next 20, 30, 40 years, being broke with no assets, only liabilities, a bunch of debt, and a bunch of low self-esteem, because guess what? Time is gonna go by quickly. I'm now 38. 20 years ago, I graduated high school. It doesn't seem like 20 years, but time is gonna go by very, very fast. So my encouragement to people in a nutshell is this. Pay the price of discipline instead of the price of regret, because make no mistake, you're gonna pay one of those two in this life. There's no way around it, there's no middle ground. We're paying one of the two prices, pain of discipline, pain of regret, the decision is yours. But to most people, here's what happens. It's called the slight edge. And I was gonna do an episode, and I, I still will, on the slight edge itself, but here's the way the slight edge works. The slight edge, you got two people starting in the same place. One of them is making the daily disciplines throughout his life and, his, and, and, and the days. The other one is making the slight errors in judgment. They look identical. Imagine that they're twins. One of them says, hey man, I'm gonna have a chicken salad today and some water. The other guy says, I'm gonna have a Big Mac. Can you see a difference on day one? Absolutely not. But then the next day, one of them says, hey man, I'm going to the gym this morning. The other guy says, hey man, I'm gonna skip gym, man. I'm gonna go to IHOP and I'm gonna have some pancakes. Can you see a difference after day two? Absolutely not. But the consistent disciplines repeated over time for guy A, the first guy, doing those disciplines over time, that compounds. The same thing with the errors in judgment of, of the second guy, they compound. So guess what? You can't see a difference in the beginning, but as time goes on, one of them starts to go up. His health, his confidence, his discipline, because guess what? When you develop the discipline in one area, it leads to discipline in other areas. The other guy, is making the errors in judgment, the lack of discipline. Lack of discipline in your health leads to that lack of discipline in your uh, finances, at least the lack of discipline in every other area. Then you look at them 10 years later. One guy is healthy. One guy is fit, financially well, significantly less debt, more assets. The other guy is in debt, is overweight, maybe has diabetes, maybe is unhealthy, has low self-esteem. I know people that literally shut off their social media pages precisely because they didn't want people to see them this day and age. Why? Because of the disciplines or the lack of disciplines throughout the years. That's 100% truth. Let's not even go that far. We're living in 2021 in the middle of a pandemic. Guess what's happening? The Cerveza virus, right? The Cerveza virus. I don't even want to say the name. Wouldn't it be a good idea right now to work on your immune system, to eat healthy, to work out, Fuck yeah, it would be. But guess what? Most people, they don't give a shit. They're gonna say, hey man, I'll cross that bridge when I get there. When I get the coronavirus, because I believe everybody's gonna get it, I got it a year ago and you know, I was fine. I was out for two weeks, you know, but I never felt threatened. I know that I have a strong immune system. I know that I take my vitamins, I eat my vegetables, I work out five days a week. I know that. But guess what? Most people dig their grave with their teeth. Most people dig their grave with their teeth because of the lack of discipline. So guess what? Lack of discipline leads to the pain of regret. I would encourage you to not pay because you have to pay one of them. Don't pay the price of regret. Instead, pay the price of discipline. So I'm going to give you three steps to go out there and better yourself. Step number one, you want to invest five to 10% on yourself or on assets. Take your income Lower your expenses. If you're a young guy, man, or not a young guy, doesn't matter, and you're dating a girl and you go out with her once a week, shit, cut it down to twice a month. Let her know, baby, I gotta save some money because I gotta invest in myself and I gotta invest in some assets. I gotta put some money aside to invest in some assets. For example, I just bought, not, not too long ago, a $35,000 Walmart store. It pays me about a 15% return on my initial investment every single month hands-free. Guess what, though? I wouldn't have been able to do that had I had the discipline to put the money away. And I have other investments that I have. I've been an investor in cryptocurrency since 2013, one of the early investors. I mean, I've made a lot of money with cryptocurrency. I've also lost a lot of money, but stocks and different things like that. So step number one, 
take five to 10% of your income at least, figure out a way at least to invest in yourself and invest in some assets. Step number two, you wanna make sure that you make it a routine to exercise. Look at the top millionaires in the world today. You look at the Ed Milets of the world, right? You look at the, the um, Patrick Bet Davids of the world and stuff, and you look at some of the top entrepreneurs in the world, guess what, they're in shape. The average millionaire and billionaire today isn't a fat, bald dude, right? They're actually in shape because they value that. Health is wealth. So anyways, work on it yourself. The next one is you want to take inventory of your friends and you want to go out ahead and see, hey, do these people bring value to my life or do they take from my life? Am I getting increased from these people or am I decreasing by being around these people? And guess what? You need to cut some of these people right away. Guess what? Whenever sometimes you have to cut in order to grow. If a snake bites me, I have to sometimes cut a part of the leg to you know what I mean? To, you know, to take out the poison, right? If I get cancer somewhere, you know, uh, on my leg or something, right? Sometimes you got to cut the leg to save the body. If I have a steak, sometimes I, I cut the fat off of the steak to make the steak more edible. In life, you have to cut in order to grow as well. So anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this episode of the DNG podcast. I'm going to bring you fire every single week. So here's what I'm asking you, man. Find 10 friends that you're going to send this video to, send it to them. And, and here's what you want to write word for word. Capital letters, two exclamation marks. Must watch exclamation mark, exclamation mark, and then say, thank me later. I want you to forward this message and I want you to do that. I want to see who the DNG listeners and the DNG army is. And with that being said, I'll see you guys at the top or from the top. And listen, I said a lot. And as always, I said it, I meant it, and I'm here to represent everything that I said. See you later.